for being here. How many enjoyed Sunday school? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our Sunday school hour. I want to encourage you to come be a part of that. Uh, I thank God I was raised in Sunday school. Glad I was took to Sunday school. Uh, I've said before, a lot of folks, uh, a lot of churches are getting away from that. Uh, but here's one church I hope and pray, amen, that we never, never neglect Sunday school. Uh, love it. Thank God for it. But anyway, it's good to see you in the Lord's house today. Let's pray for all those that are not here, those that are sick, uh, and those that are uh, astray. God knows God knows what we need, don't he? How many could welcome the Lord's coming? Amen. I could welcome the Lord's coming uh, this morning. Let's just worship the Lord uh, this morning. This altar is always open. You don't have to wait on man to call you. If you need to pray, you come pray, all right? Uh, let me make these announcements right quickly. We want to say uh, thank you for all of those that uh, helped in the, uh, the Boston butt sale and the raising the money for... Um, the youth, uh, youth camp costs is a lot of money, and uh, we we thank everybody that helped, all those uh, that done the cooking, whatever you've done, uh, brought and helped uh, donate stuff. God bless you for that. Uh, thank God for a church that can pull together and work together, uh, and those that took care of uh, the bus ministry. Um, you just don't know, Amen. Uh, how you can come together. I'm telling you. Uh, you're laying up treasures in heaven. You may not see results here, which I think we're seeing results here. We got kids that rode the bus this morning, didn't we? You rode the bus this morning, raise your hand. You rode the bus this morning, raise your hand. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? And I thank God for them. Uh, and thank you that cook breakfast. Don't want to leave nobody out uh, that are communicating together. Uh, let's be on business for the king. Amen. Uh, also, uh, let's, we got a little bit of uh, changing to do on our baptism. Unless you want to go in 40 degree weather next Sunday. The extended forecast says it's going to be 40 some degrees on Saturday night. Now, I've, hey, I've been, in the, I've been in the creek baptizing cold. I'll go. All God's people say it. Now, I, years ago, they said they used to break the ice. Wait on in. I've never been there. Amen. Uh, but we'll do what we, but if, unless anybody's got any problem with it, we're going to move it up to May the 7th. May the 7th. Okay. Uh, so, encourage you to, to be preparing for the baptism, be at Buck Creek on May the 7th. All right. Uh, what we'll do probably then is we'll take our evening service. Well, but we'll back it up a little earlier, but we'll just take our evening service and have service there and do a baptism. All God's people say it. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, car show, May the 13th, uh, 10 till 2. Uh, they did have a sign-up sheet, I think, on the, uh, the table back there. Encourage you to to give and bring uh, uh, door prizes, uh, car-related items. If uh, you want to bring a, a sponge or a bucket or a uh, armor all, glass cleaner, uh, we can't have too much. Any announcement I need to make?
We need you to really advertise this one, okay? More than normal, more than usual. Uh, I want one. Amen. Wonderful. I like a good uh, T-shirt. Do you? I don't wear neckties all the time. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Any other announcement that I've missed? Thank you. All right. I've got one uh, boss, boss and butt. Amen. For 45. Do I hear 50? No, no. <laughs> Lloyd, you want it, brother? All right, Brother Jimmy wants that one. Amen. You going to pay for mine? No. <laughs> no, I'm taking with you. Brother. Amen. Amen. But anyway, thank you. A again, do uh, you, you mind telling them what you profited? $1,620. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. $1,620. Profited, and it's all because, amen, that you, you work together. But advertise this uh, car show. Uh, Let's, let's get all that we can here, and let me make these other announcements, and I've done something with them. Yes, I did get a, uh, go ahead and say that. Yes, uh, he messaged me. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. If I can find it right quickly. He's inviting our youth uh, to be part of their joint youth choir on Friday. Now, is that what you just said? And they're going to practice. And that is when? Friday. So they're practicing on the same evening. Right, and he's uh, he's invited our all of our youth, okay? So that's this coming Friday. Encourage you to go. They came and back to us, and let's let's go back to them. All God's people said. We'll try to five forty-five. Okay, wonderful. So pl please don't plan nothing. Try to go and be a part of this. I tell you, get your youth involved. And let me just say this, it, ladies, uh, you missed a blessing on this women's conference. And uh, I know some people said, well, preacher, I, I don't have the money to do that. Well, I think we need to uh, find a way to get the money because it'll help you. Uh, believe me, you said, what are you doing at a women's conference? Well, I was asked to go because my family sing and I help sing and plus we, we help in other things but uh, as we're needed. But I'm going to tell you, uh, and you say, well, I've been, it ain't that big a deal. Well, you didn't pray enough and you didn't ask God to bless you. But I want to encourage our church needs to get behind this. Uh, I'm not a lady, but I could see there, uh, and by the way, the men... The men are away. Uh, they're taking care of security. We we pray for the ladies. Uh, and, you're, and for you to thinking, well, I don't want to, I don't believe in women preachers. There's no women preachers. I need to I need to confirm that. There's no women preachers. And you say, well, what if somebody's anointed? She don't stand there and anoint nobody. She asks a preacher to come up and do that. And she's always clear that she's not a preacher. 
I've got people saying. So if you're questioning that end of it, your pastor wouldn't be a part of it. Amen. If uh, if it was any different. But I'd like to encourage you to do that. I'm sitting there thinking, man, we need a men's conference. We do. Uh, and, and sometimes ladies needs uh, sermons just that they can relate to the lady. Women, men need sermons that just can relate to the men. Wow. I'm just telling you, it was a blessing. Uh, although I'm not a lady, it was a blessing to me. Yeah, and it's, it's just on Friday evening, uh, and then they feed you supper, and then come back on Saturday morning, uh, amen, and have service, and then you've got the rest of the day. Amen. What a blessing. I want to encourage you to do that next year. Did you, she's not made the dates, has she? Last week in April, the first week in May, we're going to let you know that. Okay? All right, let's stand our feet. Let's have the ushers to come around. Hunter Morgan, class of 2023. 2023. How many remember your graduation? Many years ago. New Man of Baptist Church, May the 26th, 7 o'clock. And um, do they need the RSVP? Okay. Okay. Do they need to contact you about anything? I mean, okay. That's May the 26th. Candace uh, Corvo. Hallelujah. May the 20th. 2 to 4 p.m. at 27 Bethel Church Road in Marion. She's invited you to come be a part of her celebration. So remember that, and if you want to know exactly where it is, see her. Nisville Church of God. Hallelujah. Used to know one of the pastors years ago. Don't know the new pastor. Amen. Good church. Hallelujah. All right. Ain't God good? Amen. And ain't God good, amen, that he's allowed to, hey, for this church to have two graduates? We will be honoring them. All God's people say it? All right. And that being said, let's bow our heads, ask the Lord's blessings upon the offering. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this offering, bless the gift and the giver. Lord, encourage the discouraged today. Strengthen those that are weak. Save the lost. And God, if there's one following afar off, as Peter did, help them, God, find their way back. Uh, we'll love you and praise you, give you glory and honor. And all God's people said, bless the gift and the giver. Amen. All right. After all, we'll pass you. Let's fellowship in the Lord.
blessed that I still got both of my parents. But I've lost grandparents. I've got two grandpas gone on. I've got other friends and family. By their accord, I'll get to see over there. I'll get to see Brother Rex. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a day. Amen. All right. Let's see. Sunday don't mean that it's not for somebody. Right. And I'm glad that testimonies talks to our hearts and lets us know that we are looking to a victory someday. Amen. And that's that's the reason I wanted that this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.
I can't sing that song, but it don't take me back to my childhood. And I'm thankful for parents that raised me in church. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. I know I'm, I've heard you quote the scripture a hundred times about if you're raised up, you won't stray. I can't remember the exact scripture. Right. Um, when I was little, I always swore that that song said, he punched me to victory. Yep. <laughs> and I remember at one point, I think maybe even asked my mom why we, why we be punched in church or something. Yeah. Like that. I was a little fella. But I, when, I, when I hear or sing this song, that's where my mind goes to is straight back to Faith Baby sure. Church sitting in that pew and, and thinking that as a little kid. But I'm thankful that I have those memories. Amen. I was fortunate Amen. to have parents that raised me in church and brought me up right now. I'm straight later in life, and I came back. And he took me back yes. and saved my soul. Oh, and I ain't gonna die and go to hell. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Ma'am. All right, good singing, choir. You may be seated. Also, in June, we have another graduate, uh, Magenta. We'll be graduating in June. Isn't that wonderful, church? What number is that? I'm on a, Brother uh, Stacy uh, reminded me of something. I remember the old hymn, He Set Me Free. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt, no freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free. Uh, that ain't the right one, Angie. Yeah, that's a good song, but it ain't the one I'm asking her for. Uh, if you don't get that for me, I ain't going to be able to finish my little... Uh, um, what is the name of that song? I was a fool to wander astray. I saw the lie. How many remember that? Amen. I always thought it said, I was a voodoo. <laughs> how, how many remember little things as kids? I thought a voodoo. I'm a and it was, I was a fool to wander astray. But he said, you're Right. Oh, blame it on it. Yeah. Blame it on it. Amen. For a clown. <laughs> Yep, that's exactly right. Praise the Lord. Let me have your Bibles. <clears throat> Let's lift them up for Jesus. Give God a good wave offering with the Holy Scripture. Love your Bible. It ought to be the most precious thing, amen, uh, that you have. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. I'll try to preach quick. If you'll pray hard, put wood on the fire. We'll try our best. These old allergies, I'm telling you, anybody got allergies? I tell you, uh, we can get out a little bit. I've got this on my heart. I need you to pray for the preacher. Uh, preached a message on Wednesday night. I wanted to preach this morning. 
And it was called, it was about drifting. <clears throat> if you're here this morning and you're saved, you can drift. And it's, it's, it's not uh, beyond any of us to slip. Right. Bible teaches us to take heed of the things that which we have learned, lest at any time we have let them slip. I believe God's given warning. And I thank you for being in the Lord's house, but I feel a little scattered this morning, but I, I need you to pray. Let's bow our heads. Brother Travis, lead us off the Lord in prayer, would you? Aren't you glad that God speaks to you? First John chapter number 5. First John chapter 5, verse 16. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that ye shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Let's just keep reading. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children... Keep yourselves from idols. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I already feel hindered, so I need you to really pray, Christian. <clears throat> Just by the way of introduction, amen, this morning, the Bible plainly teaches us in this scripture that there is a sin unto death. The Bible also says the wages of sin is death. When I say there is a sin unto death, if you'll, if you'll want to write these down or if you want to turn, that's whatever you want to do. Uh, this sin is called the great transgression. In the book of Psalms chapter 19 and uh, verse, or excuse me, <clears throat> well, I had it marked. Boy, isn't this like the enemy? How did that get there? Psalm 19 and verse number 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults, the psalmist said. Preacher, are there secret faults? There could be a little bubble come up over your head this morning and God would allow me to see it. Some of you would be embarrassed, wouldn't you? Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. 
Wow, that, that'll preach. Psalmist said, Lord, cleanse thou me from secret faults. First of all, amen, they may be secret from your neighbor, but they're not secret from God. Second of all, he said, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Wow. Let them not have dominion over me, then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I said it's called the great transgression. We find some sins, I believe, amen, in uh, our text today that I believe that could warrant or, or could cause God to sign your death warrant. There is a sin unto death. Is that not the word? The wages of sin is death. But here's our problem. Everybody in here, you shouldn't be practicing sin. If you're practicing sin, you're probably not saved. No, I'll say it. If you're practicing sin, you're not saved. You can't be right with God and practice sin. Preacher, I got saved when I was 10 year old. I got saved when I was 25. I don't care. If you're here and here and you're practicing sin, you're not saved. Well, I ain't never been told that in my life, preacher. I've never been taught that. Well, don't make no difference what you've been taught. The Word is the Word of God. But we find, I believe, you say, what do you mean God's signing? God, God gives us some idea here of signing your death warrant. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. We all have an appointment with death. I got a doctor's appointment at 9, 15 in the morning. I told my wife, don't let me forget it. I got an appointment. She didn't know it. Brother Keith, I can call in the morning. And I can say I'm not coming, and it, we, we need to reschedule it. But here's what happened. I'll have to reschedule that, but when it comes to your appointment with dying, God knows your appointment. Amen. 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 Now, God can't add to your years. Hezekiah, he added 15 years to his life. Why? Because he's turned, he's turned his head to the wall. Amen. And he prayed, and God added 15 years. God can do that. Oh, and by the way, you, you little boys and girls, hey amen, you want to live long? Obey your mama amen. and obey your daddy. That's a promise, hey amen. That's a command with a promise that he'll, hey, you'll live long upon this earth if you'll obey mama and daddy. Amen. Boy, isn't that good? Amen. Somebody says, how does somebody live to be a hundred year old? Well, number one, they've obeyed mama and daddy. Well, that's a good analogy, wouldn't you think? I'm saying this morning, amen, God can and God will, amen, sign your death warrant. And when I say that this morning, what is a death warrant? Well, uh, the definition says, amen, it's an official order authorizing the ex execution of the sentence of death. I, t I told you Hebrews 9, 27, that it's all, we're all appointed, amen, to that uh, to that death, amen, to die. But you say, well, preacher, what, what, uh, what would, allow, what would uh, uh, constitute God signing my death? In other words, what are, what are some steps in my life, amen, or what are some sins, amen, which could cause God, amen, to sign my death? Well, number one, the sin of refusing to judge ourselves is a sin unto death. Some of you didn't get it. Refusing to judge yourself. Somebody said, preacher, we're not to judge. Let me tell you something. I believe Achan failed to judge his sin and was judged unto death. He was told, you go into that city. Hey, man, don't you take nothing out of that city. What did Achan do? I'm giving it in a nutshell. 
What did they can do? Hey Amen. He took of the Babylonian garments. He took of those things, and he went. He went back to his tent, and he hid them under his tent. And what happened? Death came to uh, to, to Achan. Death came to uh, his family. Amen. And they lost the battle at Ai. Why? Because Achan refused to judge. Here's our problem in our churches today. You know when you sin. You know when you do wrong. Amen. We all know when we, hey, you know right and you know from wrong. Listen, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be, amen, we should not be judged. All God's people say it. But I believe when we refuse to judge ourselves, I'm talking about how, how many knows the still small voice of God? Hallelujah. See, God spoke to one of them in the word of God by wind. And by fire, hey man, he wasn't in the wind, he wasn't in the fire, but what was he in? That still, small voice. How many knows that still, small voice of God? God knows, hey, 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 you know when you're not right with him. I, somebody still can't get over the comment I made earlier about you practicing sin. You still, glory to God, I'll say it again, you ain't saved. And why do I have to say that again? If we, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. I believe, amen, God can sign our death warrant because we fail, amen, to judge our own sin. Let me tell you something. Hey, amen. How many know you're saved this morning? How many know you're right with God this morning? It's going to be simple. It's going to be down to earth. Hey, amen. It's to the point. Let me tell you something, amen. You, you, <laughs> we all got a brain. Amen. The right side of my brain controls the left part of my body. The left part of my brain controls the right side of my body. You've heard me use this analogy many times. Amen. Before I can point my finger, amen, to Travis, amen, there's a signal got to go to the left side of my brain, amen, run down my arm, lift my arm, raise my finger, and point at Travis. You ever heard the old saying, the devil made me do it? Devil ain't never made you do nothing. What do you mean, preacher? It all comes through here. Are you with me, church? All comes through here. Well, I just got caught up in the moment. You might have got caught up in the moment. I've had people to make that comment. Hey, man, but let me tell you something. The choice at the end was your choice. He said he'd make a way of escape when that temptation comes. You saw my preacher, I just couldn't overcome that temptation. I'll tell you what, you've heard me say it. Don't know why I'm going to say it again. I sat for about three or four hours one day with this guy. And more or less, here's what he said in a nutshell in about three or four. It might have been even longer than that. He said, here's it in a nutshell, Sister Gabby. Well, if I know it's a sin and I want to do it real bad, I'll do it anyway, and then I'll ask God to forgive me. See, that's some of y'all's mentality. Oh, I know it's a sin. The Holy Ghost pricked my heart. But, man, I'd like to do that. Man, I, I, know, I know it's not right. But I, I sure would like to participate in that. I know I shouldn't drink that. I know I shouldn't smoke that. I know I shouldn't be looking at that. And then we'll try to justify it. Well, I got saved, amen, when I was 15 years old. I'm right with God. I, I'll do it and then I'll ask God to forgive me. And it'll be okay. You know what you're doing? You're tempting God. And I'll say this. God can forgive you. And he will forgive you. But you won't do, that. You won't do God that way many times. Until God will show you, I need help. How many going to help me? The sin of refusing to judge ourself. Achan, hey, he knew better. That's the problem, Sister Kathy. We do things we know better. We know better to do those things. 
We know better than to continue to watch that on TV. I was watching TV with my grandbaby, my uh, uh, Destiny, last night, and it was it was cartoons. I mean, man, now don't don't ask me what's all on cartoons because I don't know because I don't watch them that much. Amen. But all of a sudden, amen. Uh, some, one of them said something, and Destiny said, "Oh, Papa." It said, oh, my G-O-S-H. Now, some of you said, well, why didn't you say it? Well, you might as well have said G-O-D. Somebody say amen. amen. And everybody that uses these words, uh, how do you spell it? F-R, you got it yet? I G. Uh, you that you that say you that you that use those kind of words makes me sick. And we got people like, boy, it's quiet this morning. That's all right. You might as well say the other word, cause that's what you mean. Well, that ain't what I mean. It's just an it's an old by word. You better go wash out your mouth with soap. Is what you need to. Do. Amen. I mean, I have Christian, so-called Christian people, and they'll use those words around me. I mean, they may not have said the right, I mean, the full word. Hey, man, but I know what you mean. Some of you need to clean your mouth up. Boy, it's quiet this morning. And then you say, oh, I'm talking about the sin of refusing to judge your own self. We'll do it. We'll do it anyway, and we know it ain't right. Has God spoke to anybody? Don't answer me that. Secondly, what would cause God to sign our death warrant? Number two, the sin of living after the flesh is a sin unto death. I made the comment a while ago, the wages of sin is death. When you live after this flesh, it can constitute God signing your death warrant. Hey, what do you mean, preacher? What about Genesis chapter number 19? But his wife looked back. How many remember Lot's wife? Amen. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became what? A pillar of salt. Why did she become a pillar of salt? It was because, amen, that she had a more of Sodom in her. She was told, and they were told, and she was told, whatever you do and you depart that city, don't you look back. You just depart that city. You get out of there. But listen, what was, hey, I tell you what was in her. She had more of the city in her than she had God. I mean, man, there was something eating at her and pulling at her. And what she do, she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. When we refuse, hey, we, hey when we fulfill the lust of the flesh and live after the lust of the flesh it is a sin unto death Lot's wife lived after the flesh and her sin was threefold what do you mean preacher amen she was she had a divided heart does that sound familiar today she had a divided heart she wanted to do good but she still had a little world in her how many of us are living and got a divided heart? Hey, amen. You do good for a little while, and then all of a sudden, hey, amen, you, you're right back where you started. You find yourself asking God to forgive you for the same thing over and over and over and over. You know what you're supposed to do when you come to this heart and repent of it? Or get on your knees and call on God. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to leave it there. Forgive, hey, ask God to forgive you. Amen. Forsake it. Amen. And turn from it. Amen. We're not to get back up and go back out there and do the same thing tomorrow. If you do, you didn't leave it at the feet of Jesus. And he didn't forgive you. Because why? He knowed the heart. He knew you was going to go right back out there. I'll tell you what kind of hypocrite I was. Oh, boy, now you're going to hear what the preacher was. I was a hypocrite. Stanley, I was a hypocrite. Good enough, Stanley. It's been good seeing Stanley here with his mom. Ain't it been good? I was a hypocrite. What do you mean you're a hypocrite? Does anybody ever walked in the church 
on a Sunday morning and uh, the communion stuff is set up on the table, how many starts repenting? Some of you ain't going to admit it. You walk in the door and, man, the preacher's got the communion table set up. And you start saying, oh, Lord, help me, forgive me. And you should do that. Amen. There's a whole total different message. Here's what I'd do. I'd walk in the church. I'd walk Bethel Free Will Baptist Church. Brother Tony, I'd walk in there and I'd know that I hadn't lived right. And I'd say, God, help me. God, forgive me. I'd start begging out to God the whole time knowing just to get through that service. Does anybody else want to admit that? Raise your hand. Just confession is good for Just knowing, just to get me through that service. Now, I had good intentions, brother. I had good intentions. Man, I thought, man, I, this is it. But deep down, you knew I'd go out and do the same thing. That's a hypocrite. But you know what I've done? I partook of it and drunk damnation to my soul, but I had myself convinced that I was okay because I repented at the time. I need help this morning. The sin of living after this flesh is a sin unto death. Lot's wife, amen, listen, she had a divided heart. She lingered. Let me tell you, that's another problem. When you linger along something and you stay beside, hey, there's something in here God's dealing with your heart about. You know who you are. You know what God's put, put in your, hey, you've done got a picture in your mind. Hey, ma'am, that you know that you're lingering beside and you know that it's in here and you know it ain't right. You know that, you know you ought to turn loose of it. You know you ought to repent of it. But you're still carrying it and you know that it, you're lingering beside that. And then not only that, she looked back. Thirdly, what could cause God to sign a person's death warrant? The sin of not bearing fruit is a sin unto death. What? The sin of not bearing fruit. John chapter 15 says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he goes on down and says what? He purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. John 15, 16, You have chosen me, but I, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. When we fail not to bring, bear fruit, I believe that God can. Let me tell you something, friend. It's important you bear fruit. Are you bearing any? The people you work beside say, Boy, that's a man of God. He loves the Lord. Hey, man, that's a woman of God. She loves the Lord. I mean, word of bear fruit. I believe God could constitute God. Hey, he, he said he purges it. Amen. He even says, amen, that brain it's not in him. He'll take out, he'll cut it off, and he'll cast it into the fire. Are you with me? Talking about that branch, amen, that's not bearing fruit. It's, it's quiet. That's okay. Then there's another one. Murmuring against the Lord is a sin unto death. If you'll read, amen, there in Numbers chapter 16, but on the morrow all the congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. And the result of that, there's 14,700 people died when the plague fell upon the murmuring people. If you'll go on down to verse number 30, murmuring against the Lord will cause him to sign your death. Let me tell you something. You better be careful what you say about God. You better be careful what you say about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's a, unreal to me, amen, that these old nasty um, uh, country music singers and, amen, these, these rock singers, what do you want to call it, amen? It's amazing to me God ain't already killed them, some of them, amen? I, I'm talking about how they mocked the crucifixion of Christ in a video and how they can uh, hey how they can do all of these things amen and talk I, I'm talking about blasphemy it's, uh, to me it's blasphemy but I'll say this I believe if a man truly blasphemes he won't live long now that's my opinion to this church because why would God keep them around when there's no forgiveness in this life you blaspheme the Holy Ghost there's no forgiveness here did you hear that? There's no forgiveness here. 
nor the next life. None. So why would God leave you around? You've heard my story, and I didn't know I was going to have to tell this again. Just bear with me. Hey, man, didn't have my notes to say it. Waynesville, North Carolina. I believe it was. I have a friend that lives in Clyde. Hey, man, and he's in his 80s now. And I'll never forget him to tell me a story. I believe it was in Waynesville. How that a man stood on the, uh, uh, the, the courthouse lawn over there somewhere and said that uh, this, this preacher was up preaching. And uh, he was a lot, this was a lost man that came by. And he quote said, hey, if your God's real, you have him to strike me dead within two minutes. And I'm going to tell you, you can't cross God's deadline. What happened? He said that man stood there and marked off two minutes. While he marked off two minutes, he just knocked something off the side of his face. Don't know what it was. Just uh, something flew, hit him. I don't know. Hey, man, wasn't nothing, you know, that unusual. But before bedtime that night, he was dead. You said, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, you can believe what you want to do. But I'll just say this. I believe the man crossed God's deadline. And I believe God signed his death warrant. Let me tell you something. You better be careful, people in the church. You better make sure you know, hey, don't make fun of people. I've seen people, amen, make fun of people coming to the choir. They may not come to the choir like you come, but at least they come. Amen. You, you, better, you better be careful. Amen. Making fun and poking fun. At th- now listen, sometimes those things happen in God's house. Amen. That, that is funny. That is hilarious. And sometimes you can't help the laugh. I know you've laughed at me before and that's okay. But I'm talking about making fun of the things of God. Amen. Murmuring against the Lord is a sin unto death. Not only that, fifthly, let me say, the sin of lying to the Holy Ghost is a sin unto death. Uh-huh. Remember Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter number 5? Bought a piece of ground. Lord came to them. Amen. Uh, <laughs> they kept back part of the price. Hey, what did they do? Long story short, they both, amen, lied to the Holy Ghost. What did God, what did God do? Amen. God killed them both. Why? Because they lied to the Holy Ghost. How many of us here lying? Not to me. Any, hey, I could care less if you lie to me. I'm talking about you lying to the Holy Ghost. How many's ever got, don't answer this, how many's ever got down on your knees and prayed and said, God, if you'll get me through this, God, if you'll forgive me for this, God, if you'll give me my wife back, God, if you'll give me my husband back, God, if you'll give me my family back, I'll serve you till the day I die. Promise God something in your prayer, and now you lied. You've lied. To the Holy Ghost. The Bible says better to vow a vow. Better never to vow a vow to vow it and break it. Preacher, have you ever vowed a vow to God and broke it? Lord, forgive me. And he has. You want anybody else want to be honest? <laughs> I have. I vowed a vow to God before. Hey, Amen. Hey, and I felt, and I'm going to tell you, and when I broke it, it didn't take me a whole day to figure it out. It didn't take me three or four days. It didn't take me a week. God cho- told me right then, you broke your vow. And what did I do? I felt guilty. The Holy Ghost of God came into my He said he better, he better not to vow that vow than to vow it and break that vow. Oh, who am I preaching to this morning? I'm preaching to me. Did you hear me? Hey Amen. Listen, the, si- the sin of lying to the Holy Ghost. Who's lied to the Holy Ghost? God killed him. And by the way, you think lying ain't <laughs> no big deal. Some of you think lying ain't no big deal. You know, it's easy to lie. Easy. Easy to lie. Lord, forgive me. Where you at, Adam? What do you think about me sharing my... <laughs> what do you think about it? 
<laughs> oh, it ain't nothing to do with Adam. <laughs> I mentioned the deacons meeting this morning. Here's how easy to lie. Now, you think this, you think this is going to be silly, but it's easy to lie. Now, no, by the way, they ain't a big lie. They ain't a little lie. They ain't a black lie, and they ain't a white lie. A lie is a lie. <laughs> I went to Adam. I, I'd sold one of my old cars, me and my dad did. And it was that, had that work, had Prowler on it. I said, how can I get, I said, how can I get, keep that tag without turning it in? He said, well, you'll have to just fill out the paperwork and say you lost it or stole it. I said, that's a lie. Confession is good for the soul. <laughs> Amen. Ain't no difference how he cut it. And I told Adam, I said, I don't want to lie. But he was just telling me because he knew the standard. So I go into the tag office up there and I took my tag. And I said, I sold this car and I said, uh, I'd like to keep the tag. How can I send that? How can I keep this tag? She said, oh, just sign this paper. I said, glory to God. <laughs> you know what that paper was? <laughs> so I signed it. It's her fault, not mine. <laughs> All God people say it, but that's the way they got to get around it. But it's a lie. How many getting it this morning? Amen. Amen. I said, God, forgive me, and Lord, it's on her. <laughs> she told me to sign that piece of paper. She made it sound like it was no big deal. But let me tell you something. You get to God, you get to heaven one day. Lord, forgive me. When you get to heaven one day, it's going to be a big deal. Are you with me? So who's lied? Preacher, you ain't lying to nobody. You ain't lying to the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost lives in me. The sin of lying to the Holy Ghost, sin of the death. Oh, and by the way, I've used this sermon before. Some of you may remember it. Some of you may not. But here's one I didn't use. And when I say this, and when I say I've used it before, amen. See, I, you, some of you wouldn't have known that if I hadn't told you. All God people say it. But God revisited it to my mind. And I'll say this. The sin of refusing to restrain your children Amen. is a sin unto death. If you read 1 Samuel 3.13, Eli restrained his sons not, and his sons made themselves vile. And if you go on and read, amen, because the compromise of Eli caused the lives of his, son, his sons and his own life. Let me tell you something. Because you can't restrain your children, and because you don't restrain your children, can cause God to sign your death warrant. These babies that are sitting around here today, you want to make heaven your home? You're to correct Landon and Carly. You're to constrain them. You're to restrain them. All God's people say it. Train them up. We got responsibility. I've got responsibility. All God people say it. I've got a responsibility. You got a responsibility. Now listen, when they get up out of my home, hey amen. Hey, I'm not responsible for their actions. Everybody with me? When they, when this little, when this little boy gets up and gets out of your home, you're not responsible for him. But till he leaves your house. I believe we can, hey, I believe God could sign our death warrant if, hey, if we refuse to restrain. That's the reason the Lord said to spare not the rod. Oh, some people don't like this whipping thing. Let me tell you something. You've heard me get on it, get on it, get on it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Thank God I had a mom and daddy that whipped me. Amen. Not whipped me, whooped me. How many's ever had a whooping? Anybody know what a whooping is? I'm not talking about a spanking. 
I'm talking about a real, real whooping. I'm talking about when you got done, you know you was whooped. I didn't look at mom and life at her. I didn't look at daddy and grin at him. Glory to God, if I'd have done that, he'd probably re, just redone it. All God people said, you say, oh, you're going to get in trouble with child abuse. Let me tell you something. I've had blood brought to my legs before. That's not child abuse. I've had whips that wide from a leather strap. Anybody ever had whips that wide from a leather strap? Let me see the hand. Some of you know what it is. How many ever had blood brought from a little hickory limb on them bare legs? You say, I don't like that kind of preaching. The evidence of preaching your, your children, your house, amen, is in the shape that it's in. Amen. 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 Because, listen, if we refuse to restrain them, yeah, we hate them if we don't. Now, these grandbabies, if you whoop them, whoop them when I'm gone. But I do give whoopings. Ask them. Why? Because I love them. And I want them to do right. Angie, would you get on the piano? Then there's the sin of deliberately disobedience. If you'll read the 13th chapter of 1 Kings, you'll find the story of a young man who was sent to Israel to warn King Jeroboam. And this young man deliberately disobeyed God and it cost him his life. I'm not going to go into the story. But when you do when you, deliberate disobedience to God, did you hear me? Deliberate disobedience. That's you when the Holy Spirit this morning, when this altar call is given, is pricking your heart. There's something that's been said this morning that God spoke directly to you, even right now as I'm preaching. If you reject that, that could cause God to sign your death. Why? Because you're refusing to obey the drawing of the Holy Spirit of God. And you that are sitting in this congregation that God's been dealing with you about, that sin, that action, Whatever you want to call it, that God's been speaking to you, that God brought to your heart while I've been preaching. You know what it is. Well, let's just go ahead. Stand to your feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I need you to sing whatever the Lord's put on your heart. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Amen. You said, but preacher, I, if I go, people think I'm sinning. Quit worrying about it. You might be praying for somebody else. Just come right now. You, you don't want God to sign your death warrant. What? Close your heart. Just sing, honey, whatever the Lord's laid upon your heart. Coming all around the altar this morning. Would you bring it?
quickly now before they close the door. That's what this altar is for. A father is praying with his son, and a mother kneels beside them. She's thanking God they've come, and no man is standing there in tears. He's giving up a part of him that he's held back for years. Hearts are being broken, lives are being changed, and those who call up on him now will never the same the time has come to give in to the Lord that's what this altar is for that's what this altar is for you don't have to care darkness there's a love that's true Jesus he's a waiting friend he's waiting here for you come quickly now before they close the door that's what this altar is for that's what this altar is the darkness there's a love that's true Jesus he's a waiting friend he's waiting here for you come quickly now before they close the door that's what this altar is for every head bowed just for a moment this altar is still open. Lord, I love you. I thank you, God, for hearing and answering prayers and those that's been all over this altar. God, encourage, God, the hearts of your people. Lord, those that's come, Lord, including myself, I ask you again, Lord, to have mercy on our soul. Forgive us for our mistakes and sins. Oh, God, I pray that you'd help me, Lord, to be in the center of your will. Thank you, God, that you don't have to sign my death warrant because, God, I know my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm trying my best, Lord, to live for you. But God, help our unbelief, God, at times. Lord, help our doubting. Oh, God, encourage us, Lord, through the precious word of God. And I'm reminded of David, Lord, in the word. There's times that he had to encourage himself in the Lord. And God, that's what we have. We have you. Now, Lord, that that you've spoke to, help them, dear God, not to refuse the call and the drawing of the sweet Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, thank you for being attentive. Amen. This morning. I've learned how to live and depend on Jesus. He's my friend and he's my God. Just lean on his arms. I've learned.